good, good afternoon. Oh, I, I'm not quite sure whether it, it's evening or afternoon. Okay. But please welcome to my uh, sessions. But before we start, I'd like to uh, encourage those who bring laptop today, just bring it up and then just open your laptops and then just clone source code from my GitHub. We're going to play it together during the sessions because uh, if we just keep talking about programming, it's going to be very boring and you're going to fall asleep during the talk because it's pretty um, complicated in some reasons. But by the way, I will start my talk right now. Okay. Uh, I like to um, uh, give a talk here in, um, in a conference uh, under Python for a very long time, which is my dream. But I like to tell you that I personally not a Python programmer. It's I just learned Python probably um, last couple of weeks. <laughs> okay, uh, but I like to uh, show you my experiment that if I want to uh, apply a basic concept of functional programming in a language that I've just learned it, what 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 did I get from that? And we learned it together. Okay, and um, actually my name is Twin Panisombat. Uh, you can call me Roof. Okay, roof, just roof, very short. And basically, I'm a managing director of a company named uh, Arts Team. Okay. And again, if you are here and then you can just want to play with me, you can just download source code and hopefully it will run on your machines. <laughs> okay. And uh, a, a, a very brief overview about our company that we have been working together. So we are just um, 470 people working together. And we believe that uh, software development is a uh, key uh, factor of a competitive here in business development today. So uh, we focus on deliver a better experience for our customer and also we uh, improve our skill every day as well. Okay. And one thing that we're trying to, uh, uh, how can I say, prove or see it or show it, we believe that an organization structure which is met for uh, a software development um, right now is a team-based organization, and it's going to be a very flat organization as well. So right now, we are living evidence that you can visit and see if teams living together for quite a long time, what we will look like. So if, you, if you'd like to visit, just come to me, and then I will give you a link to do a booking as well. OK, let's start. As I told you that, I'm actually not a Python programmer. Basically. I came from a language which is very boring, named Scala. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, and uh, yes, and uh, I learned a lot from this, this language, and we do apply a lot of concept of um, category theories in this in this language. And uh, before I start uh, preparing my talk, so I like to draft my idea from my favorite language first. So it's going to be like this in a very basic uh, programming problem. Like we want to pass CSV file, read data from it, and then calculate an average from data in that, that file. So if you read this code carefully, okay, it's, it is very easy to understand because it's very precise in terms of type and also logic is just contained in just one line. And you, if you um, see source code closer enough, you will see that every function or every method in this file return only one type called try. Okay. Okay. Which is, this is very uh, important keys. Okay. Every function will return one type called try. And at the end, here, we compose function together, and then we just pass try from the beginning till the end. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Uh, okay. 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 And you will see that there is no side effect at all. I mean, there's no try exceptions. There's no uh, very uh, detail in terms of a. Uh, uh, other things rather than a, a business logic that we want to do. So this is the beginning. So I will try so hard to transform this into Python programming. Okay. So after two weeks of learning a lot, this is the best that I can do. <laughs> okay. 
So that is the, the beginning, and then this is the end that I want to show you. But how can I come to these solutions? We will play together during these sessions. Okay. If you download source code, okay, the, the first file, which is named one underscore beginning or basic, is going to be the, the, the starting point of these sessions. Okay. So during the, the session, okay, I will try to introduce you a concept of functional programming. Not all, but some of them that can bring me from the starting to the end. So it will consist of six basic concepts called a function should do one thing and do it well. The second one is currying. The third one is higher order functions. The fourth one is arithmetic. The fifth one is function compositions. And the last one, which is very dramatical concept called monads. Okay. <laughs> okay. We will, we, will, we will follow these steps. Okay. We will start from a very basic one. And then I will ask myself that if I want to go that way, what kind of uh, theories that I want to apply to the, 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 the problem? And then we transform source code to another level. Okay. I won't um, bring you to to the, the land of theories, which is I will explain all things about monads, and then I will end my session with nothing we've learned together. Okay? So we will, we will transform our source code step by step, and hopefully I can finish it within half an hour. Okay. Let's start with the first one. Okay. So this is, it might be a basic uh, Python programming uh, if you open it on first file, right? If I want to open CSV file, and then extract columns, and then calculate average. Okay, normally, I think more than half of uh, programmers who first time learning Python probably write code like this. It might not a good Python code, but at least it works. Okay, so I like to apply. I like to introduce you the first concept of functional programming, which is do one things and do it well. Okay, so if I want to ask you, focus on function name extract columns. Okay, how many things that these functions do? Okay, one, who give more than that? Come on. <laughs> okay, if you read it very uh, roughly, this function will do only one thing, right? But if we focus it more in detail, it's do then more than one thing. Like it's read data from CSV file and it will strip header out. And then read data from specific columns and then transform string to float. This means this function do three things. Okay. Do three things. So this, it, it means that this, this is very hard for us to reuse this function to do things in the future. Because the function itself do three things together, but it was named extract columns. Okay. So if we apply the first principle of functional programming is do one thing and do it well, can you help me extract that function into three smaller functions in 30 seconds, please. Those who can finish it, we give you a prize. <laughs> okay. I'm waiting, 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 waiting. I'm waiting for you. Okay. So, hope you can run this, this program. Here, the first one. Basic one. Okay. So, you... Yes, so this is the, the outcome of the, the functions, okay? Okay, if you finish this, please raise your hand. I will give you something that you can claim it back later, okay? So, we're going to jump into the second concept, okay. which is go very fast. If we jump to the, the solution of this one, you will see that uh, the composition of function that I want at the end is going to be something like this, right? So we change function to get dash. But to start 
from this one is very hard because standard function, uh, standard Python programming didn't provide you a composition function, right? So you need to do it by yourself. But anyway, if you want to do it, what theories that you need to apply to a basic Python programming to bring you from the beginning to the end? What? A bit? Uh, which, which one? The original one. Okay, here. That is why I asked you. It, you can transform this code to be a better one, right? Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So, the concept, the, sec the second concept that I want to introduce to you is called curring. Sound very uh, weird. Okay. But what curring is, if you explain, uh, if I, I want to explain to you, curring is very basic things that if you have functions that takes three arguments or more than one argument, Currying will help you to transform it into function that takes one argument. Okay? That is very basic. Okay. But how can we do it? I will show you later. Okay. And the second concept that you need to use to compose things together, we call it function compositions. Okay. For our very beginners, when you compose function together, it's going to be something like a, a, a box that you put inside and you put inside and the return function from the box which is the, 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 the inside the inside will return out right and then you execute it sequentially but it is very hard to read okay it might be better if you can chain it like this okay in one line okay ah. and the third one is we call it RET RET means uh, the numbers of arguments that you pass into functions. Mostly, for functional programming, we usually use unary functions. Unary function means function that takes only one argument. Okay? If we, come, if, we, if we went back to the extract column, okay, the problem will be these functions because this function takes two arguments, and it's going to be very hard for us to chain it together with other functions, which is get only one parameter. So we need to change this function to be function that takes only one parameter by using currying. Okay. A concept of currying, you can find it in the second file. Okay. To do it by your hands, okay? You can write like this, it's very simple, okay? <laughs> the, the curring function, okay? Curring function itself, okay, it inspired by another concept called higher order functions, which is a function that take functions as argument and return another function. So if we apply higher, higher order functions with curring, you can write curring function by yourself like this, okay? So, from plus, which is take two parameters, you will transform your code with plus, which is take one parameter step by step. And from this, you can partially apply argument to that function, okay? And then you pack it into one variable. And once you have another parameters, you can easily apply it later. So this means we can transform our column extract into occurring functions, okay. So, here is a, an example of changing your function's name extract column occurring standard Python with function compositions and also higher order functions. But this is very weird. I mean, uh, I think Python programmer won't do things like this. <laughs> But I want just to, to show you a concept that you can do it by yourself. So if you want to do it in an easier way, we better apply a library called 2Z. Right? Okay. For with 2Z, mm -hmm. you can just place an annotation over functions that you want to, to tell compiler that this is a query. Okay? And it's going to apply this concept back to extract column 
immediately. And then you can see at line 33 and 34 that we can partially apply a function named extract score columns and extract name columns by reusing what? Extract columns. Okay? So from now on, your extract columns will transform itself into a unary function, which is ready for you to compose it. Okay. So from here, we can compose function easily by using a, a, a function named pipe that we can chain unary function together. Okay. Okay. So here I want to stop. Okay, I want to stop first. I want to come back to this one. I'd like to um, uh, summarize what I, I, I uh, delivered for you. To do function compositions, okay, it will be a lot more easier for you if you transform your fu every function into a unary function. But not every function was designed to get one parameters. But you can solve that problem by apply concept of currying. Okay? So that is the reason why currying is a very important concept of functional programming. Okay. Yep. And it's very basic. You, you understand it now. Okay. And I will bring you to the next level. Okay. After we apply currying, okay, with a uh, standard tools called 2Z, okay, we already transform our function to be something like this. So we're going to be read CSV file and extract columns, and then we do partial apply, apply, apply to make a unary function. And then we remove headers and we convert float, and then we calculate average. And then we can pipe it or we can compose it easily at main programs. Okay. But however, this kind of program is good enough in terms that you have a very happy part. But in terms of exception handling, to write this code in this way that you always return none, your code will be break for some reasons. So we might refactor our code to reach another level by handling exception in a proper way. Okay. From those who didn't write Python, please give, forgive me. Okay. <laughs> so I try my best uh, to, to refactor that code, not breaking during executions. Okay. You will see that the, the sorry, I'll, I'll go to this way. Okay. The detail of each function will remain the same, except I change returns after exceptions to raise exception outside functions, okay? To let the program run through, even if it has some error inside that functions. At, at the end, I also compose that function inside try, okay? But from this style of codings, we still need to handle exception in main programs, right? So for us, for us who came from Scala background, we don't want to see try exception in main program. We want to see only pure business logic in our main program. We want, I want to get rid of try exception from my main program. How can I do it? So we reach the limitation of 2C. Because 2C itself, it provides you a basic function compositions, but it didn't provide you a exception handling in terms of functional way. Okay. So this means that if we want to go further, we need to transform our code with another concept called monad. Okay. <laughs> okay. This will be a very, uh, uh, how can I say, controversial uh, slide, okay? Monad itself, uh, uh, I think it's very basic, by the way. <laughs> and it's very uh, complex for some reasons. So I like, I like 
this picture is from this guy very much. He explained monad in very simple way. So I'd like to, you to uh, just uh, uh, breathe deeply. Okay. Monad is just a wrapper or container of things okay, to simplify your functions that return only one type of containers. Okay? And inside containers, you have two choices. The right container and wrong container. So, we probably make a joke that we have the right container, but in a rare case, we usually call it left container. Okay. <laughs> okay, nah? okay, nah? okay. So, this means that from now on, we will try to refactor our code to return more than Okay, not rest exception or not return a, a prop, a, a, some sort of data type. We will wrap everything inside containers. And before we pass to the next, to, to next functions, we will have someone to extract data inside and then pass to next functions. And then next function will apply function to that value and then wrap it inside containers. And then pass to the next one, and then unwrap it, and then pass to together. So, from this concept, okay, your life will be a lot more easier, believe me. Okay. So, this, the code will be something like this. Okay, I will hide the detail, right? You declare functions that take some arguments, and at the end, you can imagine that your function will only return two things, right or left. Okay, right or left. And once you reach this kind of, of, of uh, functions, you can chain it together infinitely. And your program won't break in the middle, in the middle of executions. Okay, I will explain to you later why. Okay, let's go to an example. I have uh, eight minutes left. Okay, I hope I can do it. Okay. Let's see an example. Uh, I, I draft the function called dy, very, very classic one. So we want to prevent dy by zero, right? Okay. Uh, the way we write with um, uh, monad things, like we only return left or right. So we will return a dy by b if b is actually is uh, larger than zero. Okay. <laughs> this is my mistake. Okay. And I it and. If not, it will return left contain error message that we want to pass to the next one. Okay? So this is a concept. And if you run it, you're going to get result like that. Hopefully. Okay? <laughs> but I tried it many times last night. It's worked properly. Okay? And if we apply concept of monad into our code, which is finished by 2Z, it will be a little bit changed, okay? Here, you will see that our code, right, will not contain try exceptions. We can transform our code to be a more simple way, right? And then we can, we can just make decision by if else statements that if the, fun the, the condition is correct, we will return right value. If it's not match, we return left value. Okay. And then by these basic techniques, we can compose function together and there is no more try exception in your main program. Okay. And if you run it, okay, I will try to uh, uh, please play for me that it will work. Okay. Here. This is the, 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 the result of average. And if I uh, change some sort of things inside here, okay, okay, it will, it will, it's still running. There's no error prone from your program. It's still running to the end, and it, it will say that there's no file, the file not file, okay. And if we change something else more here, like here, Run it again. Okay. It's going to be unable to convert to float. 
So your program will run smoothly from start to the end without noise or side effect in your main program. You can only focus on main business logic of function compositions. Okay? Okay. But anyway, anyway, I'd like to um, bring you to the concept. Why? Why? This, this can, it can be like this. It will come to another concept which is pretty similar. You might have heard about it for quite a long time. We call it, I mean, uh, the, the prettier version of Monad is, I mean, from my perspective, it's been railway-oriented programming. Okay. So your functions is like a railways that you have input, and at the end, you have two, two choices, right? Right? Success or failure. Very simple one. Okay. And you chain it together. Okay. Then. Chain it together. If it's run in the right part, it's going to start from start till the end with no problems. But if it's fall back into an earlier part, okay, it will be chained together. It might pass those one, but it will be changed until the end. So this means that at the end, you only check that whether the result is left or right. That is all about concept of monad or railway oriented programming. So you will see that after program executions, the result will be assigned to result. So the last four lines of code, it is very simple that you check the result that whether it's right. So if it's right, you extract it. If it's wrong, you just show an error. Okay. So it's pretty simple. It is very easy to read. It is very easy to understand. Mostly, it is very easy to test. Because your function is only do one thing and do it well. Okay. So, uh, before I end my uh, talk now, uh, I still um, cannot reach the level that I want it to be here using Python. Sorry. If you look at this one, there's there still be something which is um, oh sorry, uh, annoying me. I want to change this part of code, okay, by apply only monad. There's the the final version of this code is there is no if else. There is only monad, and there is only one line of code that represent your business logic. There's no more side effect in your source code. You don't have to try exception. You don't have to prevent your, your file corrupts or there's no such file in your system. You can just represent that I want to open this file. If there's no file, see, see me at the end. I will see the result later. Okay. So, i like to beg you guys. Help me. <laughs> Help me solve those functions and reduce it into only one line, which is using I.O. Monad. Okay? And if you can reach that level, please ping me. I will give you a big prize. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and for the last one, before I go, I'd like to give a credit to, uh, to, to the one who teach me a concept of functional programming. Uh, without this guy, I might um, end up with um, something else. But from his lectures, he, he, he gave me a, a lot of inspirations that um, functional programming it's not just map, filters, or reduce. It's actually the way you think about problems and how you deliver your program that reflect your thoughts, not a, a commands that ask machine to do some things. So functional programming is like explain your thought directly to your code and then let the things happen after that. Okay? it will be a lot more fun if we apply an actual thoughts of functional programming to your program later on. And I hope this talk will inspire you for some reason. And uh, please forgive me if I did a lot of mistake in this session. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much.